Well, looks like we're making a video about another gacha game. But anyways, Arknights is currently doing a rerun of the Maria Neural event, and this got me motivated to make a video to rant about one of my favorite operators in the game that debuts in this event. No, not you. There we go. Why slash? <laughs> After seeing how much I lost it in my attempt to get the Ayamiko, you might be thinking, oh boy, man's really outing himself with videos about hot teasing girl boss type anime waifus. Which to that I say, for as much as she is a nicely designed character, I personally enjoyed Y Slash's story over anything else. Because in a game that tells overarching stories of discrimination, war, and trauma through both its characters and world building, Y Slash's story in Arknights is quite possibly one of the most human in the game. One about navigating through life. The nation of Kazmiers had long abandoned the old Queen of Knighthood, instead modifying it into the largest combat sport in the country, the Kazimir's Major. A young Marian neural seeks to become a knight in order to protect the family's noble title and honor the legacy of knighthood, especially that of her sister, Margaret, the radiant knight who became a champion of the Major, only to be exiled from Kazimir's when she was discovered to have oropathy. But Maria was inexperienced and needed training, so alongside her is her relative, Sophia, aunt by lineage but more like a sister in terms of age. She was once the sensational Y slash knight from a previous major season, but now retired from competition after a debilitating injury. The details of Sophia's former career are not disclosed in full detail throughout the game. What we do know is that she reached the top 16 of the major all without the sponsorship of a nightclub. She excelled in the major with both her combat skill and her knowledge of the ins and outs of night sports, from strategies in different events, to winning the public opinion, and analyzing her opponent's previous matches. But upon reaching the upper echelon of the major, the Y slash knight was at a disadvantage against the more well-funded and technologically advanced opponents. Sophia's operator module mentions the Fisher Knight, an opponent that was trained specifically to beat her famous techniques, outfitted with weapons and armor, specifically made to counter her tactics and whip sword. Coming into her duel, she had to change up her strategy, keeping her sword set to normal rather than as a whip, close the distance, and beat her opponent with pure skill and fight IQ. This was the fight that led to Sophia's retirement. The bartender Marcin recounts that it was nowhere close to a fair fight. At some point during the match, she was injured and thus begrudgingly forfeited. Realizing that she would no longer be able to fight in prime condition, she retired from competition. The effects of her injury still felt in the present day, as pain shoots up her left arm when she tried to pick up a sword. Retirement was likely difficult for Sophia mentally as well. She too looked up to Margaret's legacy and wanted to become a knight to escape her position as a mere lady in waiting for the Neural family. And to prove that she was more than capable, Sophia turned down all sponsorships, paying for equipment out of her own pocket. But that dream and idealism could no longer be attained, only locked away like her cherished whip sword that could no longer be used to its full potential. The event story places Sophia in the role of a wise mentor and acts as a direct foil to Maria. Where the former is experienced and realistic, the latter is naive and idealistic. But interestingly, Sophia undergoes a character arc, though subtle, but nevertheless meaningful. In reading between the lines of the event dialogue, one can perceive the impression that Sophia comes into a conflict with her past. Granted, she claims to have already come to terms with her past and retirement, as she brushes aside reminders of her former career as if it's no big deal. And if we the player are to assume that this is true, then her conflict with the past would not necessarily be traumatic in nature. But it can be inferred from the dialogue that Sophia's conflict stems from Maria's idealism and how much it resembles her. Their spotty teacher-student relationship symbolizes what I think is a struggle of not just accepting past experiences for what it is, but also learning how to continue living beyond it. It was interesting for me to see the realistic insights she teaches Maria about competition, which is what a mentor-like character would be doing. But at the same time, there is a subtle presentation in the story of Sophia, someone being reminded of and limited by her perceptions on how to proceed through the career. Sophia continuously highlights the physical risks to becoming a knight, 
because she took those risks herself and faced the consequences. She begs Maria to forfeit tough matches, which is something she may have regretted not doing. And she displaces Maria's ideals as a consequence of following Margaret's example, as if she did not do the same once upon a time. None of this is essentially pitiful. In fact, with the circumstances of the narrative, it is probably even the right thing to be doing, but it is nevertheless a difficult state to be stuck in, and is therefore the point of conflict for Sophia. On the other hand, in seeing Maria's determination and becoming her coach, Sophia is also taking steps to move forward from her past. One notable scene from the event, at least for me, was when she confidently picks up her whip sword, newly restored by Maria. After remembering what holding that sword felt like, she takes some time to reflect on her past career and the ideals that she used to believe, and following this, she heads to the arena to support Maria fully. This moment stands out to me because of Sophia's subtle but also impactful change. Rather than feeling limited by the past, she instead frees herself and chooses to approach life differently. And in order to actualize that choice, she rushes to the stadium to support Maria. Another story in Y Slash's lore also reflects this conflict, but at least this time it's in a less melancholic way. Archive file number four recounts a time when Sophia began thinking about what she would want to do with her life. Following the events of the Casimir's Major, she joins Rhodes Island initially to take care of the Nero sisters, while also offering her services as a combat instructor. But Margaret was already doing fine with Shining, Nightingale, and the rest of the operators, and Maria was doing well, both as an operator and in learning to become an engineer. It is at that point where Sophia herself felt lost. She then spent some time thinking about her past, this time about her life experiences of upholding the neural lineage and what she experienced in joining Rose Island as an instructor. It took some time, but she decides to continue being an instructor and also stay with her family, but also opened herself up to seeking new paths in life. It's a similar pattern from before of recognizing and informing herself of the past while at the same time not being limited to it, but instead continuing to move forward. Among the ensemble cast of operators in Ark Knights, with intricate designs and expansive lore, Y Slash is one character who stood out to me amidst victims of trauma, literal war veterans, eldritch monster hunters, and even the cast of the main storyline. And I think this is because of how simple yet human her story is. And it is one that at the very least makes sense to most of us in real life. There are times when one can feel burdened by having to remain in the same path just because your past experiences have already dictated it. And it's something that I know very well for myself. And the thing is that the past doesn't even have to be inherently negative or traumatizing in order for it to feel as if we're just following a path. It could even be a mundane day-to-day -day list of events that just slowly formed how you live and how you make decisions in life. And eventually you realize that you're now stuck just living the same way you always have been. But I think what Y Slash's story and character growth represents is that when navigating through life, the choices one makes in the present can always be informed of past experiences, sure, but it doesn't have to be limited by it. At the end of the day, it is you at the present who has the freedom to choose your directions. And yeah, anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. The thing is, I don't really know when I can make a new video because of my classes and assignments, but hey, whenever that comes out, I hope you get to watch it. And that's it for me. I don't really know how to end it, so bye.